<sighs> Hello guys, it's Telly here, and today I'm starting another series, woo! So before I get into this series, which you can probably already see on the screen, but don't, don't cross off, I'll explain, but first of all, before we get into this series, I've got a couple of announcements, as I always do in all my videos. Uh, I have to apologise for not uploading anything in a... I think a week and a half or something, I don't know, because I've been really busy at university and with other stuff, you know, I have to sort stuff out, you know how life can be, it can be a bitch sometimes, so I've been busy doing stuff out, and now I've got things a bit under under more control, I'm going to do some videos, I know I've got a couple of series already, I've got the Pokemon, I've got uh, Minecraft, you know, I've got two different Minecrafts. I've got the Minecraft server. But I'm not going to be doing anything on the Minecraft server because when I record it, it gets all laggy. And we haven't got a lot of interest in it at the moment. So I'm going to I'm gonna wait until we until things pick up a bit before we do any Let's Play on that. And I just want to take a little break from Minecraft. And I'm going to start this. And this series is going to be how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! Now this game, you may think, oh, what? Okay, why do I want to play this? This is a kids game. Or well, it's not really. It's aimed at kids, but it's not really. I don't understand why it's aimed at kids, because kids can't play this game, because it's a very skillful game. If you ever played poker, then you're going to love this game. So I'm going to start off with the very basics on how to play this game. And I'm going to do a little series on like all the different categories of the game, and we're going to get into more advanced stuff, and how the game is, because the game changes every six months, which I'll go into in later videos. But now we're doing the very, very basic stuff on how to play the game. Okay, and if you if this series actually makes you want to buy cards, I'm going to say go for it, but I'm going to say wait until you we get into the more advanced stuff, because you'll be buying cards, and then you might find, oh, these cards are shit. Why did I listen to telly? So, you know, we're going we're gonna to wait. Just, just wait until we've got into this. So let me log in. I haven't prepared anything yet because I'm lazy. And, you know, I kind of like to do things like improvise. So, yeah, let's roll. So this is Dueling Network, if you don't already know. It's an online dueling website where you can play the game on here and you can you have access to every single card in the game. You know, and here's a deck I've been playing around with, but we don't want to see this yet. Um, how to play. There we go. So, what we're going to do on the here, you have every, access to every single card, like I just said, and you don't have to buy anything, it's all free, and you can just test different things out with friends on Skype and all that stuff. But I'm just going to be using this. I could do it in real life because I have loads, loads of cards, loads and loads of cards, but I thought it would be easier on here. So, a bit of history about this game. I would consider myself a pretty good player at this game. I'm not the best. I'm not an, a mate like the god's nuts at this game, but I am pretty good at this game. I'm going to be honest. So, uh, I've been playing this game for, I think, 10 years. I've, I've been playing it since as long as I can remember. I'm 19 years old, if you didn't already know. And... I've been playing like since my friend showed it to me in this original set. You might have already played this game like when you were kids and you got packs and stuff. Like if you know this pack, Legend of Blue Eyes, I think it's called, the very first booster pack of the game. I've been playing it since then. But anyway, that rambling. So first of all, there's the first thing you need to know about the game is each player has eight thousand life points each that you start off with. You then have to try and to reduce your opponent's score to zero. The first player to do that wins the game. Simple. In competitive games, it's best out of three. So the first one person to win two games wins the match. So, and that's pretty much how you play it. Thanks for watching. No, I'm joking. <laughs> so first of all, there's multiple different cards, which we, you can see here. We have monsters, we have spells, and we have traps. I'm not going to be going through all of them in today's episode because it'll be too much to take in. So we're going to go over the most... Actually, that's probably the more complicated one, but we'll, we'll get this one out of the way first of all. It's monsters. So if we go on monsters, we have a variety of different monsters, but we're going to keep it very basic for now and we're going to do the very basic monster and that is normal monsters so this guy actually let's do this one first this one is what's called a normal monster and you can tell every card has different colors surrounding it so you can see all there's loads of different normal monsters here like when if you hover over it, it brings up a picture of them you know but these normal monsters they'll have some text in them that is very irrelevant you don't need to read it it's pointless it's just 
It's just there for the aesthetics. They do nothing besides these numbers and these stars, right? And I'll go into the other, there's other stuff like that and that, which I'll go into in a second. But let's start off with the, the these bit here. So if you look, I don't know if you can read it because it's quite small. That's where the mouse is there. It says 80K, which means a tech. And then if you see this, it says, where my mouse is now, it says DEF, which is defense. So these are basically are different stats. And obviously, 80K means attack and DEF means defense. So you can probably assume where I'm going with this. So if you attack, you have 1800 attack, right? So if, if I'm player A and you're player B and you have this guy on your for field and I attack it with seven colored fish, we can then go in, we compare our attacks. So you have 750 attack and I have 1800 attack. So I obviously win that fight. So yours will die and mine will stay alive. Okay, but if we go into, let's see if there's a good example of one. Of course, there, oh, that one, that one. If yours is in defense mode, which is basically tilted sideways, which I can't show you unless I go into a game, but it's basically sideways, like, like diagonal if you like, and I attack with my attack, which is 1800, into your guy's defense, which is 2000, obviously yours will win. So mine will not die because yours didn't threaten me because it's in defense mode. Okay, But this is where the damage comes in. So if we go back to our first example, and we go here, you've got, let's do an easy number to calculate actually, let's do this one. So let's say I, I attacked you, you have this, mine's 800 points stronger, so 18 minus 1000. So, mine's, you, so you will take 800 points of damage off your 8000 total. So you will go down to 7200 off your total score. And remember, once that hits zero, that's game over. You lose. So that's so. That's one way to do damage, and like I said before, when I attack, if it's in defense mode, I don't die, but I still take the difference, so 1800 and 2000 is obviously 200 point difference, so I will take 200 points of damage, so I will go down to 7800. Obviously it's not as much, but you didn't lose any cards, I didn't lose any cards, and there we go. So that's basically that. Right, the next very, very important factor in a monster is how many stars it has. So as you can see, this one has four, this one has six, this one has three. So I'm going to put these into categories. So we need these two together. We need... Uh, let me find another guy. Oh, we'll do the Blue Eyes White Dragon, because everyone knows that one. We will have... Dark Magician... I think that'll do. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So what we have here, we have all different levels of cards. So if your monster is has one star, two stars, three stars like this guy, or four stars, you can summon it from your hand. Okay? You could there's no you don't have to pay any life points, you don't have to get loot get rid of any cards, it's just you can summon it for free. And this summon is called a normal summon. Basically each player is entitled to one normal summon per turn, unless a card states that you can have more than more more, more than one normal summon. But for this case we don't, so which I'll go into later. But basically we have one normal summon. So you could normal summon this card, seven coloured fish, if you want to, for your turn. But that means if you have both of these guys in your hand, you can only normal summon one of them this turn. Okay, but then, as you may notice, the more stars that the monsters have, the bigger the attack and defense goes. So this guy's got a lot of stars, but look at his attack, 3,000, 2,500. But for these guys, anything that has five stars or six stars requires what's called one tribute to normal summon. So if I have seven colored fish on the field, I can tribute seven colored fish to normal summon this guy from my hand. And remember, you can only do one normal summon. So I can't just go normal summon seven colored fish tribute for this guy. You, ha you have to normal summon seven colored fish, then on your next turn, if it's still there and your opponent hasn't killed it, you could tribute seven colored fish to summon him on your next turn. Okay? Same thing with him. There's, the levels don't interfere with the amount of tributes. So... 
So we're, like I said before, we'll recap quickly. One, two, three, or four, you can normal summon for free. Five, six, you can no you can normal summon. You have to tribute one monster though. And as you can probably guess with the next guys, seven, like Dark Magician here, eight, and plus. So anything that's higher than eight requires two tributes to normal summon. So if I have both Acrobat Monkey and seven colored fish on the field, I can tribute both of them to summon dark, the Blue Eyes White Dragon or the Dark Magician. And again, that is still a normal summon, and you can't do more than one normal summon unless a card states you can. And that's basically the gists of summon. There are there's a little, hundreds of different types of summons, but again, that's for another video. So I'm just going over the very basics here. So that's basically everything you need to know about normal ones. They don't do anything other than attack, defend, tribute, normal summon, blah blah blah. They don't have any other uses besides that. Okay. But there is other types of monsters, like as you can see here, we have loads of different types of monsters. So we're going to go over the next one now, which is Effect. Now these monsters, you'll see they have different colours around them, which is a kind of orangey brown, if you like. Like comparing that to these guys, which is their yellowy pale colour. So any monster that has this orangey tone to it is called an Effect monster. And you can see down here, if you, I don't know if you can read that, you probably can't read that very well. It's, uh, it says effect. So on these guys, you see they don't have that. They have their type, which is which I'll go over later on, and then they don't have anything next to it. But all of these cards, it doesn't matter which card I pick, they all have effect. Oh, he's pretty, isn't he? <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, they always have their type and their effect. So what an effect monster does is basically this is where the text on it comes into play. Okay, so in in addition to being able to normal summon it get your one normal summon, you can also use that monster's effect if it states you can. So for an example, what's a good example? Um, trying to think of a good example off the top of my head. I know, I know. This guy, he's good. This is Stratos. So what? if you read this card down here, it says when it's normal or special summon, we're not gonna go over special summon yet, just ignore that. But when it's normal summoned, you can activate one of these effects, okay? And that, and it, but every card, there's thousands of cards, and they all do different things. So, you, like you said, he's level four, if you remember. So you can normal summon him for free, and when you normal summon him, his effect activates. Not every monster's like that. Some monsters activate their effects on different circumstances. Like for an example, uh, Mystic Tomato. He activates his effect when he's destroyed. So remember when I said if seven coloured fish attacked Acrobat Monkey, say that Acrobat Monkey is actually Mystic Tomato, and I attacked Mystic Tomato, that will trigger his effects. You can see here when it's destroyed by battle, which is when he attacks it. So I attacked, killed Mystic Tomato, that triggers his effect. So I get to summon one Dark Monster with 15 less attack from my deck, which I'll, again I'll go over later. You can probably already tell, but I'm not going to I'm not going to go into that yet. So that's basically effects. It's pretty simple, and again the same logic of its levels applies to monster effects as well. There's no difference. So like if we pick here, we got these guys. These require two tributes unless specified in their effect, and then you have the six which is here, like these will require one tribute each unless specified. So that's basically monster effects. We'll get we'll keep these guys up here. So what's the next one we've got here? Let's go over Yeah, let's go over ritual now. Ritual's a little bit more complicated. But it is pretty simple. So let's go over uh, this guy. This one's a pretty simple one. This is Black Dust the Soldier. If you notice, or obviously you can notice, this guy is blue around the edges. So it's not orange or it's not yellow. And this basically means it's a ritual monster. And again, if you look down in the box where all the information about the card is like the attack and defense, you can see, if you look closely, you can. I don't know how well that is on your screen, but you can see it says ritual, which basically means a ritual monster. Now, to summon ritual monsters, Again, the level comes into play here. You have to activate its designated ritual spell card to summon it, which is stated here, Black Luster Ritual. So if I copy that and I put that in the search bar, you'll see what I mean. Uh, 
Actually, let's get one of those in here so we don't lose it. Let's put you in there. There we go. So this is so to summon this card, you need to play this card, which I'll go over in a minute after we finish monsters. But to summon it, you need to tribute monsters equal to its level. So you can basically say I have, and you can tribute from your hand or the field if you'd like to. It's up to you. So if I have seven coloured fish on my field and Mystic Tomato in my hand, I can trib I can send both of these guys to the graveyard, which again I'll go over later. You can get rid of these guys, tribute them, with this spell card to summon this guy. Now some mon monster ri uh, ritual monsters will have different effects. Obviously this one doesn't have an effect besides saying that you need to activate this spell card. So if we go back to monsters, get rid of that, and we go ritual, you'll see, like this guy for an example, he does have an effect. So not, I, like some will... They all say different things, and you you only know this by looking at them and analysing the game, and you can see for yourself they all have different requirements to summon them, you know. So that, that's basically monster. It's very simple ritual monsters. It's just you need. Let's remember you need the mon the ritual monster itself, the spell card, and then monsters to go with it. So like I said before, you can tribute both these because these become level eight if you four plus four. But you could tribute. A blue eyes white dragon in your hand if you want and that will fulfill the requirement if you like because that's eight so that that's how many stars you need to tribute for it so you could tribute that you could tribute a blue eye dark magician and one of the, your seven colored fish if you like it doesn't matter if it goes over it has to be equal to or more so the seven plus four obviously is over eight so that fulfills the requirement as well and same with this guy you can do hit that plus that that's that's nine if you use the Mystic Tomato, that's 10, and that obviously both of those will fulfill its requirements. And you could tribute more than two monsters, it doesn't have to be two. If I have three Acrobat Monkeys in my hand, I could tribute all three of them, along with the Ritual card, to summon that if I would like to. And again, I'll go over spell cards, how you use them in a later video. But for now, we will, we'll scroll down the list. Fusions is the next gun. Now, Fusions are purple which is pretty easy to remember, purple ones, let's put one of these, I can't put it in there, I have to put it over here. So this is a fusion monster, and basically this is very similar to ritual cards. Most fusion monsters have, will stay how to summon them, some won't, which I'll go over in a second, you need another card which I'll bring up in a sec. And basically a fusion monster, if you haven't already guessed, you can probably tell by the type of monster, is you have to fuse cards together. So most fusion monsters, unless designated, will tell you what monsters you need to fuse. So this guy, for example, Ambulance Rescue Roid, what the hell, what the hell that's called, you need to fuse a Rescue Roid and an Ambulance Roid to make him. And basically, you just basically put those two cards in your graveyard, which is where you put cards that you don't want anymore. I won't search them because they're, they're real cards, but, you know... Blah. Now to summon it, it doesn't say how you normally summon it, it says it has to be fusion summoned. And the way to fusion summon it is by using, mo everyone will, not everyone, but most people will know this spell card as polymerization. This is one of the most famous cards in the game. It was one of the first cards to be made actually in Legend of Blue Eyes. And basically what this does is it's a fusion card and you fuse monsters together to make it. So like I said for this one you need to fuse a rescue roid and an ambulance droid by using polymerization and then you get to summon this guy. And that's that's pretty simple. It's just very similar to rituals. Like us, you have to use a ritual monster except you don't need to use certain monsters unless designated. It just says you can use any monsters. So like I said you can use this guy and this guy and then you can summon that guy. But for this you need to use certain monsters. So you need to use the rescue roid and the ambulance roid. You need to fuse them together using polymerization. There are other fusion cards like fu like um, Future Fusion for an example. That card fusion summons fusion monsters as well. And they all do it in different ways. It depends on different situations. But this isn't a spell card video. This is monsters. So let's go back. I don't really need to go over more, any more fusion monsters. Other fusion monsters will have different requirements such as maybe not needing certain monsters they like for example this guy chimera tech overdragon it says one cyber dragon plus 
one more machine type monster one or more machine type monsters sorry so you can use any machine type monster and like I said I'll go over typing later so that's basically fusion monsters they're not very well used so the last two mo types of monsters we'll do these together if we get uh, you and you we'll get a couple of these because they have different things Okay, so these are these the first ones are synchro monsters. And like I said on here on the card in the box, it says synchro. It also had this one, for example, that I randomly picked is effect as well. So that means not all, every synchro monster has an effect. For example, guy, I think, yeah. You. This one's a synchro monster and he doesn't have an effect. So he's like a normal monster if you like. He doesn't not every synchro monster has an effect. But most of them do. Most of them do. So yeah. And the way to summon these synchro monsters is pretty simple. Uh you basically have to use it, it, every synchro monster has different requirements and it says it says one tuner monster plus one on one tuner monsters and let me see if I can think of a tuna monster. It's a uh, crab. Uh, there you go. This guy. As you can see on here, we well, probably can't see because the Dawling Network display is a pr pretty blurry. But I'll tell you anyway. Where the mouse is here, it says tuna. And basically that means you can use a tuna monster plus any other non-tuna monster to make a synchro monster. So, so like if you want to combine going with the examples earlier on, you can combine Crabones here, which is a tuna, plus seven coloured fish, which is a level four, a normal monster to make a synchro. But it's not that simple. As as in most cases you need to use basic math. So if you look at its stars, not only can you normal summon it for free, but it's a level two, which you have to keep in mind with tuners. So if I want to synchro Crabones with server coloured fish, you have to add the levels, so that's level 6. So by doing so, I can make any level 6 synchro I want, so unless designated on the cards text. So 2 plus 4 is 6, which means I can synchro into Gaino. So for example, it says one tuner, which is Crebones, and then one or more non-tuner monsters, which is seven coloured fish. And then their levels equal 6. So if I, for example, combined Crebones with Acrobat Monkey, this is now a different one. This is the same requirement as Gaia Knight, but it's a different level. It's 2 plus 3, which is 5. Which is, so it's not 6, so we can't summon Gaia Knight. So in this scenario, we would summon Catasta, which again is the same requirement. One tuner, which is Crebones, and one or more non-tuner monsters, which is Mystic Tomat, not not Mystic Tomato, is Acrobat Monkey. And then you just summon it. And these basically go in a separate pile to other cards, which, again, I'll go over in a later video. And that's basically synchros. They all have different effects, which you have to read their cards. Like, this one doesn't have one, and this one does, which I'm not going to go over because that's very complicated for now. But that's basically synchros. And there's loads of different levels. There's a different synchro for every level. So, like, you can go 2 plus 6 and make an 8-star synchro. Like, um, just to get you an example, Dark and Dragon for an example. Actually, no, not Dark and Dragon. Let's do Dark and Dragon is a bad example. Star Dragon. Star Dragon is an eight stun. It has the same requirements. It's one tuner, which is Crebones, plus one or more non tuners, which is the Ambient Beast, which is six. Plus two is eight, so you can make Stardust Dragon. Now going back to what I just said before, Dark and Dragon is a bad example. Dark and Dragon has slightly more requirements. It says one tuner plus one or more non-tuners dark monsters, which again I'll go over not now but later on. And the final monster that we have to go over is Exceed, which is black cards. Now these black cards obviously are the black ball. They have slightly like different uh, graphic effects based on them, and like every other card, they have their levels next to them. But you might notice their levels are in different positions to other monsters, like they're on the other side of the card, whereas Fusions 
normals, effects, rituals, and synchros all have them on the right hand side, while black cards have them on the left hand side. And this is basically to state that these are not levels, these are ranks. I don't know why th the game makers decided to call these ranks, but there you go, that's what they wanted. And basically, again, these all go in a separate pile like the fusions and the synchros. All of these guys go in this separate pile here, which is in which I'll go into in the later video. And to make these, they all have different requirements, just like the synchros and the fusions and the rituals. But to summon these guys, let's do th a bad example. Let's do this one for an example. Digusto Phoenix. This is a rank 2, although it's not a level because it's different positioning. This is a rank 2 exceed monster. And to summon it, like just like the synchros and the fusions, it, like here it says on the top of the card, the first thing it says how to summon it. Digusto Phoenix has two level 2 monsters. And to summon this, if we just get a level 2 monster for an example, 2, 2, uh, let's say we have this card. If we have two of these on the field, say like say I normal summon this one first turn, then I normal summon another one next turn. You can then put these cards on top of each other to summon Diagusto Phoenix, and basically these cards stay attached to the Diagusto Phoenix. So that so that basically this sits on top of them, which I'll I'll show you later on in the when we do another video because that might be hard to imagine, but. It's basically the they make a pile if you like. So this will be on one, that will be there. This will be on top of that, and then this will be on top of both of them. And then basically, based on how many monsters you use, you get different effects. So for example, once per turn, you can detach one of the exceed materials, which is these guys, because these are now not exceed materials because they're underneath that. You can now you can then detach one of them, but so you get rid of one underneath him and send it to the graveyard to get his effect which is to target one wind monster and that can attack twice during each turn which I'll go over later in the video I keep I don't know how many times I've said that but yeah I know that might be a little bit more complicated I have to show you in the visual example but I'll, I'll go over that so I think that will be all for today's video I'll just quickly go over the last exceeds that I've got here. Like each different exceed is different level. So this one's a rank one exceed and it's you, you might need more than two monsters to summon it. So this one for example you need three level one monsters. So you just look at their levels so we can't use three Mystic Tomatoes because it's not a level one, it's a level four. We can't use Crabones because it's a level two and it's not if it was a level one we could use three Crabones to make it. And it doesn't have to be the same card. It could be for example, if we get get rid of this, get rid of that, Utopia, for example, this one needs two level four. So if we have two, a Mystic Tomato and a seven colored fish on the board, on the field, we can put these two on top of each other and then summon this guy, if you'd like to. Or you can just use two Mystic Tomatoes if you have them on the field, or two seven colored fish, or vice versa. So, but for this we need three level ones, and then you basically do what it says. So you detach a material, which is one of the level ones underneath it, and then you get a certain effect. And that, and that's pretty much it. Like again, this one you need two level three water monsters. So you'd need. So again, I'll go over that in the next video. And that's basically how monsters work. That's every monster in the game. I know that's a lot of information to take in, and you can pause and rewind. Um, to get to the parts that you didn't understand. If you have any questions, just let me know down below, and I'll, I'll go over them in the next video. Because the next video, we're going to go over type, attribute, and different summoning, different summons, which I, I'll probably do right now, actually. But they'll be in a different video. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and got something out of this. And stay tuned for the next episode and trust me if you if you already know all this stuff stay tuned anyway because we're going to be going over very advanced stuff later on in the series but for now we got for the new people we've got to get it all this eat this basic stuff out the way and teach them how to play the game so until next time i'll speak to you guys in the next video bye